My topic is, what if Gilda is right? Uh, what's right with today's educational system? Um, and I'm speaking to everybody out there today, everybody involved in education, students, parents, teachers, administrators, business leaders, politicians, and even everybody's grandmother, because as we all know, everybody and their grandmother has some opinion of how to educate children. Um, my thesis today is, is what if the education system isn't broken? Um, I know we wring our hands a lot. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about, you know, we need to dump more money in, we need to do this, we need to do that. But, but what if we've already got the tools in place? What if, as Gilda, Glinda, I keep calling her Gilda, uh, what if Glinda the Good Witch from The Wizard of Oz was right? And all along we did have the tools. Dorothy spent a whole movie trying to figure out, you know, how do I get back home? And really, she had, she had what she needed from the start. So I know, sounds quite crazy. I, I spent a lot of my youth watching movies, and my heroes came from the movies. Uh, one movie in particular that I got a hero from was The Poseidon Adventure. Gene Hackman, uh, in particular, was the hero. He was a little bit unpopular, a little bit crazy. Um, I was nine years old when my sister Janet took me to see The Poseidon Adventure. Uh, it was a movie of chaos, death, destruction. Um, luck, hard work, determination ended up carrying the day. It was kind of a good nine-year-old movie. Um, I suggest someday that you go to see it, although not the uh, awful remake. Very early in the movie, there's a scene where Gene Hackman has to convince a very skeptical crowd that his crazy idea is actually the right idea. He's got to convince a bunch of people that at this point in time, the, the ship is capsized, everything's upside down, everybody's got an opinion of how we should save ourselves. Gene's got to convince people to climb up an upside down Christmas tree towards the bottom of the ship to save themselves. Ugh, insane. Who wants to do that? A lot of people don't follow him, but he does convince enough, and turns out that was the way to go. So that's what I'm going to try and do with you guys today. Who am I? Uh, as Reza said, my name's John Traley. Uh, youngest of five children, first one in my family to get a college degree. I went to Drexel University, got a bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering. Started to work for GE Aerospace as a controls engineer. My first jobs were uh, helping to build maneuvering reentry vehicles to put the Soviet leadership at risk. And at the same time, I was working strategic defense initiative projectiles, aka Star Wars, to try and knock their RVs out of the sky. Um, my opponent was supposedly a 10-foot Russian, and I relished my job and worked, worked hard at it. Through the years, I went through a series of assignments from entry-level engineer to chief engineer, program manager, functional manager, where I actually managed people, and that's kind of what's over here on the side, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, my customers were the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, NASA, some people that didn't want to know, be known as our, our uh, customer, um, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, after 25 years, I switched careers, became a teacher to help society in a different way. Um, I figured with my experience and my background, it would be easy to, to work with students and convince them the importance of education. So let me start. As I said, I don't think the education system is broken. I think we've got the tools in place to, to be successful right now. And the, the mission is, is to use the tools we've got. Uh, there's a lot of statistics out there, and I'm not here to argue statistics. Um, one statistic I, I could quote is 30 years ago, the United States was the leader in the quantity and quality of high school diplomas. Now we're 36th in the world. Um, what does quality mean? And is quantity something that is worthwhile measuring? Is a 200 word essay better than a 100 word essay? So like I said, I've read enough educational statistics to, to know that you can argue for and against anything that you want to do. I've provided a, a bunch more here. Um, so, so that's not the game I want to play. What I want to go from is my experiences from industry, my experiences as a parent, my experiences as a relatively new teacher, uh, to show you why I think we've already got the tools in place. Okay, so to start, this is the hardest part of teaching. Uh, this is Gene Hackman. That's him trying to convince somebody to, to climb up the Christmas tree, and that's the Christmas tree. Um, I had experience with this pretty early in my career. In the mid-90s, I was manager of a group of 30 people. Uh, I worked for Lockheed Martin and King of Prussia. We, I was manager of the controls group. We built autopilots for satellites. Um, the company was looking to consolidate, go from four plants to two plants. We figured out we're safe. A lot of customers, customers love us. They're not going to close us down. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Um, they were going to close us down. 
everybody had to work until their job was done, and then you were to be laid off or um, have to move to Sunnyvale, California. So my group went nuts. Chaos, death, destruction, what do we do? You know, will we survive? Which way do we go? So I actually gathered them all together. It was my Gene Hackman movement. Um, you know, I gave the speech. Look, people, I don't know, the company lied to us before. Are they lying to us now? Uh, there was an incentive out there of 10 weeks bonus. If you stayed to the end, they would give you 10 weeks pay. Um, but why should we believe that? We believed if we were a good division, we would stay open. So I gathered them all together, said, hey, guys, um, I've been through a plant closing before. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if they're lying to us or not. But what I can tell you is if you trust me and you follow me up the Christmas tree, uh, I'll, I'll help you survive. Um, I actually got 28 people out of the 30 people to follow me got them to safety, 10 weeks bonus, placed every one of them in another division. So it, so it was a good success story. So when I become a teacher, I'm like, hey, this is a piece of cake. I've got a good story. I came from a pretty, I, I'd call it an upper, lower, middle class background. Um, education wasn't a big thing in my neighborhood, but I found that education was valuable. And I you know, had a great career because of education. So I figured out, I can convince students that education is the way to go. Uh, I convinced these engineers to follow me up the tree. I can convince these students as well. Uh, what I didn't realize was that 30 engineers, uh, their motivation is pretty easy to figure out. Um, 125, 14 to 18 year olds, a uh, little bit more difficult. So I'm not always able to get the kids to follow me up the tree. Um, some just aren't ready maturity wise. Some have things going on in their family. Um, some just aren't ready to be educated for, for one reason or another. So that's the hardest part, I think, of our job. Um, we've got a lot of tools in place. We've got trained professional teachers. Um, the, the hard part is figuring out how to get them to, to follow us up the tree. All right, how do we get the kids to, to follow us up the tree? Uh, fairy godmother, when will my process come? When will my prints come? That's an illusion there. I'm a weird guy with illusions, too. Sorry about that. Um, in industry, we used to call it process of the month. Um, design to cost, uh, backward design, Six Sigma, Taguchi methods. I was chief engineer of a job called Small Caliber Smart Munition with the Navy. It ended up being a really phenomenal success. At that time, design to cost was the process in vogue. Um, we were touted as DTC gurus. We got written up in the newspaper and everything like that, but we weren't gurus in process. We just followed logical engineering decisions to, to get the job done. Um, in education, it's the same way. There's a lot of different processes out there, but there's no magic bullet. Um, we've, you know, teachers have been trained in process through their education degrees. They've got certain theories of how to, to teach and how not to teach. Um, we're constantly being given new ideas, um, which we, we incorporate as much as we can. Uh, but there's no single magical process that's going to work for every student. Um, while I'm talking about the lack of, of magical processes, I just wanted to say a little bit about technology. Um, is it our savior? Is it our menace? Uh, is it just a tool? In the middle there, I'm not sure if people recognize it or not. It's, it's the day the earth stood still. I really love 50s B-movies. Um, technology was always going to save us in the 50s. Uh, this was an alien that came from another planet, a planet I know well, um, and, and really didn't quite save us. Um, I'm lucky enough to work in a district with a phenomenal technology, one-to-one -one Chromebook, um, smart boards. I take advantage of it every day, and I'm, I'm thankful for it every day. But I think there's a little bit of a um, misinterpretation of how much technology can cure. Just like in the 50s, people from another world aren't going to save us, um, technology isn't going to save us. I, I think of uh, two cartoons I watched, Fred Flintstone and, and George Jetson. Um, pretty similar guys, different times. Um, they both had mean bosses, kind of grind a day jobs, um, didn't really get ahead in life. Uh, Fred had absolutely no technology. He had to stop his car with his feet. You can see there they hadn't invented brakes yet. Uh, George had everything, every technology you can possibly want, and his life still wasn't better. Um, what I want to say is technology is great. The tools are phenomenal, but it doesn't supplant learning you still actually have to do the work. In the 80s, there was that Bowflex machine. If you bought the Bowflex machine, you were done. All right, you're, you're, you're in great shape. It took like five seconds a day. Um, not really true then, not really true now. Um, please, embrace the technology, use the technology, but realize that you actually have to do the work to succeed with the technology.
So, um, what did I say? What should we be learning? Um, there's a lot of angst of, of where education should be going. Um, what's Finland doing now? Um, what are they doing in the next school district? What are they doing in the next state? Um, what should we be teaching in school? So should we be going to STEM, totally focusing technology and math? Yay, I'm a math teacher. Um, or should we be um, like just teaching our kids tech sk skills so as soon as they come out of school they can instantaneously get a job? Uh, what, what should we be doing? I could tell you from my experience, um, in my 25 year career and now as my career as an educator, I was very thankful for my English courses even though I was a technical person. They helped me to write persuasive proposals. They helped me to write persuasive reports to tell the customer that we actually did succeed in what we were trying to do. I was very thankful for my language courses that taught me about other cultures, that everybody isn't the same as me, that people think differently, so that when I negotiate with a customer from, from the South or from the West or from the North, I, I could appreciate their viewpoints and I wasn't so obnoxious as to not to win the contract. Um, of course, I was very thankful for my technical science and math background as well. But my viewpoint of education is we shouldn't be teaching specific things. We're, we're teaching how to learn. That's the most important school skill that we can give our students. Um, my students are always asking me, ah, Algebra 2, when am I ever going to use it? And if you go to my wiki space, I've got a video of Peggy Sue, uh, another great movie, uh, where she talks about how she knows she's not going to use math in the future because she's come from the future. Um, right. You're not going to solve simultaneous equations, most likely. Uh, you might not um, have to simplify a uh, rational function. What we're teaching is how to learn. Um, what was important in the 50s? What was important in the 60s? How many people uh, know 8-track tapes? Use 8-track tapes, right? My first paper route, paper route, what's a paper route? Um, a lot of these things that we did in the past don't exist anymore. The skill is to learn how to learn, to, to appreciate how to learn. So I, I see I've got, oh, my students always ask me too, hey, Mr. Traley, when are we going to stop learning? And my question, answer to that is when you die, which is true. Um, so to kind of summarize, where do we go from here? What am I looking for? Okay, students, don't be worrying about, you know, when will my process come? You're here now. The, the tools are here now. Your teachers are here now. Uh, there's a lot of things for you to take advantage of. Don't, don't have angst for the future. I've been to the future. It's cool, but this is great too. Um, Teachers, all right, trained professionals, you, you got in it for a reason. You know what needs to be done, have passion for your work, um, you know, work as hard as you can, you know, keep on top of your students, don't, don't, get, don't get worn down. Parents, this is a big one. I coached baseball for a long time. You went to high school. You had your successes, you had your failures. Um, use that information to help your student. Um, you know, let them know what it means to succeed, what, that, what it means to fail. Instill in them the joy of learning, the importance of learning. Please, God, don't tell them math isn't important. Um, but please, don't try and relive your high school experience through them either. Um, administrators, a very big job. And as I see my administrators here, I, I, I realize how big of a job it is. Um, lead. Uh, monitor the teachers, make sure that they're doing the right things. Uh, run an interference for us. Uh, you know, we need help. There's a lot of things that are bombarding us. Uh, business leaders and politicians, I, I say stay out of it. Um, <laughs> kids aren't widgets. We shouldn't be maximizing profits on their backs. Um, for politicians, I just say pass budgets, not um, educational policy. Uh, so with that, uh, I just want to wrap up. I know it's a crazy idea. I think we've got the tools in place. I hope you'll follow me there. But for now, I've got to go with Reza and climb a Christmas tree. <laughs>